What I would always recommend when, when you have a job is to always keep track of your accomplishments because she was able to convey that. We just had to fix up how it appeared. Um, but I would say the having a strategy is going to be the first thing you want to do. The next thing you want to do is you want to become a networking fool. Welcome to my show. Well, what a difference a few weeks has made to our economy. And it was a, a, a booming economy where there were, it was pretty much a, you know, a job seekers market. They had their pick. And now all of a sudden with, you know, over 10 million people unemployed, uh, everything has shifted. Nearly 10 million people filed for unemployment over the past two weeks. Take a look at this line of hundreds of people near Miami risking their health to apply for unemployment. So to talk about that, talk about the economy, talk about who's hiring. Uh, Michael Goldberg, he is with Hiring Transformed. Michael, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I'm, I'm excited to be here. And uh yeah, this, uh, this economy has definitely uh, gone, gone crazy. And if I may, it's actually up to close to 17 million now. Is that as what of it yesterday's is? 17 number. million. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. People, some people say it could go much higher. So I know that, uh, like all great entrepreneurs, you, you're pivoting in your business, uh, focusing now on where the greatest need is, advising uh, people who are out of work and, and want to find that job. Absolutely. So yeah, so I want, uh, I'm here to do, uh, uh, you know, basic resume reviews uh, for any level of candidate uh, that wants to, that, that wants to get together and talk. And certainly I do offer other services for a small investment. Uh, if they want to brush up their LinkedIn profile, go through mock interviews. Um, if they want to learn how to do more uh, research and have a job search strategy. And I think that's where a lot of job seekers are struggling right now because it's hard to strategize when most people aren't hiring right now, but it's still good to have a strategy in place, right? Uh, the values of the company, the, it doesn't match you know, your personal values and the culture has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, the size of the company, the industry, um, and for anybody that uh, wants, I've got a, a workbook that I uh, that I created that I'm happy to give away for free so they can just DM me on the social platforms where they're listening to this and watching this, and I'm happy to provide that to them. Well, let's start with, you know, the, the, the person who, you know, they had a, a, a steady job, things were cruising along, and then they just got hit by a truck. Uh, they, their, their resume is two decades old. The last time they did a job interview, uh, Carter was president. You know, yeah. what, what do you say to these people who are just really now still in a state of shock? Yeah, and so it's interesting. I actually had a conversation with the, uh, a person very similar. She had been working since 2001, never skipped a beat, moved, you know, has had three jobs in 21 years. And here she finds herself in a job search and, you know, she, she asked me to look at her resume and I did, and, you know, she, she definitely, what I, what I would always recommend when, when you have a job is to always keep track of your accomplishments because she was able to convey that. We just had to fix up how it appeared. Um, but I would say the having a strategy is going to be the first thing you want to do. The next thing you want to do is you want to become a networking fool. Uh, what I mean by that is you want to go all out and, meet people. But the one thing that I, that I want to advise you on is that uh, there's, you know, 16,999,000 other folks doing the same thing that you're doing. So you have to be patient um, when you're reaching out to friends, family, former coworkers, uh, former companies, things of that nature. Um, that is super crucial is, is the patient's factor because they are getting hit from all sides. Um, you know, right now, the, uh, I would say focus on the industries that are hiring. So um, that would be s supply chain, uh, technology, and uh, obviously healthcare, though it's interesting. I read, I was reading today in the Dallas Morning News that actually there have been some layoffs in, uh, in the healthcare space, but I imagine that's more the administrative side than it is the clinical side. Um, so, um, and she's in PR, so, uh, and, and she's trying to figure things out. And so it's a matter of having that strategy, being patient and then networking, uh, and having informational interviews and just checking in on people, uh, to see how they're doing. That's, that's the simplest way to start your, uh, your job search. 
don't just start applying the jobs. You know, you want to have a strategy. It's, it's like buying a car. You don't just buy the first car you see or the first house you see, uh, unless it's your dream house, right? Or your dream car, or in this case, your dream job. And these days, I guess you really aren't doing face-to-face -face interviews with the, your, your employer anyway. You're, you're having to do it via Zoom or Skype. Is that different? Um, it is a lot different from people. Because, and it's interesting. So uh, when I was with Freeman, the event management company, uh, you know, who unfortunately had to lay off or had to furlough 90% of their workforce, um, you can imagine. Uh, but, or no, it was, yeah, and we started with video interviews there in the American Heart Association, right when it was just kind of becoming a thing. And uh, some of the, the, the videos that we saw on the pre-recorded sessions or even during the live interviews, people would be in bed, people might be to get away from everybody, they might go hide in a bathroom, and you can pretty much tell when you're in a bathroom, it's got that echo to it. Uh, so you don't want to be doing that. You want to be dressed professionally uh, from the, the waist up. Uh, you don't, uh, I mean, if you want to wear shorts or flip-flops or bunny shoes on the bottom, nobody cares. Just uh, dress professionally up top. You want to do what I'm doing, look directly at the camera and as if you're having that conversation. Make sure your lighting is perfect. Um, uh, but do it in a, do your interviews, uh, find a room, let your family members know that you're going to be on a call, try to prevent the dogs from barking. Cause that always happens here, especially when I'm on my LinkedIn live. The mailman comes at exactly 11 o'clock and the dogs start barking as soon as I'm live. So just el eliminating distractions. But here's what I will tell you about the kids and the dogs barking and things like that. It's okay. Why? Because we're all, we're all working from home. We're all going to have interruptions. So, Jeff, if your grandkids were over at your house uh, and they came up to you while you were on camera, right, um, you'd be okay with that. And me as the interviewer would be okay with that because it's the new normal. That's cool. Let's talk about do's and don'ts for the actual job interview. I know, I know a big one is uh, prepare. A lot of job candidates really don't even do their homework on, on the company or the person they're talking with. Yeah, no, um, that's, that's spot on. Um, so when you, when you, if you're lucky enough uh, to get an interview, um, and this is whether it's the way the things were, you know, three, three or four weeks ago, and now the new normal, if you will, um, you want to, you want to, like I said, the strategy is preparing for an interview is different from the job search strategy, but there's some similar techniques. You want to be uh, out there researching the company. You want to go to Glassdoor. Look at what their employees are saying, but keep that, keep what you need to keep in mind about some of those employer reviews is, you know, there's going to be some bad ones out there. There are going to be some good ones out there, but there are also other employer review sites that are out there. So um, you want to do research on the person that you'll be interviewing with by going on LinkedIn and really understanding and seeing if you can find a, 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 some common ground. So uh, Jeff, let's say you lived in, um, where have you always wanted to live, Jeff? Um, <laughs> to toyed around with the idea of New York. All right. Oh, my God. So if, <laughs> if you wanted to live in New York, right? you're in New York, and I'm in Dallas, but you worked in New York, right, as a, as a, as a Fox 4 anchor. Um, I would know that you were a Fox 4 anchor. You did the evening news. You, um, you, know, you uh, now own a PR firm. Uh, and you happen to live in Dallas at the time I was living in Dallas, and oh yes, I remember you. It's those kind of common connections that you make that are going to have a great impact in building rapport with the job interviewer. Um, but you know, definitely doing the research. If it's a public company, going and looking at their uh, their 10Ks and looking at what their financials are. You know, if you're not if you don't have strong business acumen. You know, make sure you're up to date on the latest and greatest with the industry, how the economy is affecting it. Um, if you have connections to people inside that company, uh, make those calls before and say, hey, tell me about so-and-so. This is who I'm interviewing with in a couple of days. Tell me what's going on at the company. Um, are things going well? Are you getting you know, a lot of communications from your CEO? Do as much homework and as much background as you can. Um, the one thing I would say is probably avoid calling someone in the group the, of which you're interviewing because that eventually could get back to the interviewer that you were kind of 
checking out. I mean, it's good and bad, right? It can have both effects, but I, right now I think it's good. The, the more you can stand out, the better. Uh, to, to that person and build that rapport, you're gonna be real successful in your interviews. And prepare, and the other the last thing I would say is, stand in front of a mirror. Think about and anticipate the questions that, uh, that you're going to be asked, and whether, you, uh, whether it's your spouse, your partner, significant other, whatever, whomever it is, your roommate, have them ask you interview questions you think you're gonna be asked. You're always gonna be asked the first question is tell me about yourself. Have that down, make sure you limit it to about two minutes. I've had candidates that go on for 10, 15 minutes, and by then you've kind of lost it. So let the interviewer control the conversation. Wow, brilliant tips. And uh, Michael, your website is hiringtransform.com, is that right? Yes. Yes, it is. Well, yes, this has been is. great. Thank you so much for the tips. And, uh, and that's it for this show. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks for having me.